Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Natalie and I've been a daycare owner for 20 years here in beautiful Park City, Utah. And today I'm gonna to begin a series on my channel which is going to teach you how to become an in-home daycare owner provider. There is a childcare crisis right now. I don't know if you felt it yourself, if you've experienced it, if you haven't been able to get a job because you can't find childcare, or if there are wait lists that are years long. There are so many things that are wrong right now in trying to find a good childcare facility, if any at all. Like right now, people are so def desperate for childcare that they kind of just go to the first childcare that will accept them, which is not a good thing sometimes. So I was thinking, moms or dads, if you ever decided to start working for yourself, have you ever thought of becoming an in-home daycare owner, daycare provider in your own home? Especially if you have a young child at home and you want to go to work and you want some income. However, you know, if you're trying to go get a job, another problem with the daycare industry is that if you do go get a job and you do find a childcare facility, sometimes your whole paycheck will go to paying childcare. And what's the point of going to work if you're going to give all of your money to a daycare center? And look, I've been a daycare owner for 20 years, so I get it. I understand where people are coming from and you know the small business owners such as myself we have to charge in order to pay our bills as well so it's a very sticky situation however childcare is so scarce right now that I want to teach the mom that wants to go to work to maybe think about going into the childcare business and watching a few kids in their home and becoming their own boss that way. So moms, talking to you, maybe some dads, right? I don't know. Um, I always think of moms. So moms, what do you guys think? Um, if I taught you how to do it, maybe you can. So before you even start to even think about wanting to open up a childcare facility in your home, I wouldn't even call it a childcare facility. I would call it an in-home daycare. I have been in daycare for 20 years here in Park City since 2002. And I had an in-home daycare from 2002 until 2008. And then from 2008 until 2021 in September, to be exact, I had two hourly daycare centers, commercial daycare centers in Park City. And it was hourly, so it was not tuition based, it wasn't the same kids, it was tourists, gym kids, drop-ins, it was kids from everywhere. And I had to create a system in order to make my hourly daycare flow. So in 2021, I decided to downsize. I'm 50 years old, I'm a grandma, I was working 50 hours a week, Monday through Friday, and I had two centers to worry about and I just didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to downsize, make my hours, and this is what I'm talking about, I'm going to get to it. I wanted to make daycare hours that would work for me in my life. So now, in September of 2021, I opened up Heaven's Little Angels, which is my daycare right now, and I'm open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4. And then I have an extended hour until five and only like two or three parents utilize this. I'm licensed for 10 children, but I only care for eight at a time because that's what I wanna do. So I decided to build this in home to what I wanted, to what would work for me so I don't get burnt out. And it has been life changing having Fridays off. And now I take four weeks vacation per year, so I take a vacation in July, October, Christmas week, and in April. Four weeks vacation and then all federal holidays off. So it's been really good and I'm full, my daycare business is full. I, um, I have a wait list 
and people want great childcare. And that's what I provide. Babies are my jam. I'm a infant and toddler center. So my oldest child that I tend to is three years old and um, that's it. That's how it works for me. That's what I created. That's what I wanted. You can do this too. You really can. And I'm going to teach you how to do this. It's not it's, it's, it's a lot and it seems easy for me because I've been doing it 20 years. But if I show you how to do it step by step, and this is not going to be the only video. So if you want to see the series that I'm going to create, and I might create a course as well, but that's down the line. I'm just learning how to YouTube right now. Anyway, but if you want to hear more of the step by step, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel like this video and comment down below any questions that you have because I could answer those questions for you. I can look it up and help you. Here we go. We're going to begin. I have some notes right here and I'm going to attempt to screen share as well. I've never done it before because I'm new to YouTube, but mm, let's see what happens. So anyway, what I said here if you want an extra income stream, do you want to join an MLM? <laughs> no, because that's not a guaranteed in income stream, right? Joining an MLM would be out. In-home daycare is fabulous, but there's one thing that you need to ask yourself. Do you like kids? <laughs> if you like kids, okay, we can proceed. But if you hate them, don't open up a daycare, please. Don't do it. If you hear barking, that's my dogs upstairs. If you have children of your own, how many do they go to school? Because if you want to become child care licensed, licensed for child care, any child that's under the age of four would count in your ratios. And ratios is the number of caregivers per children. So I'm a one to eight ratio and I can have two infants, and then a third if they're 18 months old and above. So that's eight total kids. If I have three infants, I can only watch six children. And this is in the state of Utah. Every state is different. And if you're watching this from another state, this is going to apply to you because I'm gonna teach you how to look things up and to figure out the process. And if you have a question, like I said, comment below I will get back to you and I will put my email in the description in the in the description below and then you can email me questions and I'd be happy to email you back. Let's see. If you wanted to open up a daycare in your home, you want to think about like how many kids you would want to watch. If it was me, I would start off very little. I would get license for 8 or whatever the max amount is allowed in your state for one person and watch below that. But have your license for the max, a maximum amount so then that way when you build your business and you're able to care for more kids and you get a systems down and in place, then you already have that license. You don't have to worry about trying to reapply for more kids. Does that make sense? So you'll wanna get licensed for the max amount for one person. And that's if you're doing it solo. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Next thing that we're gonna talk about is your home. Where do you live? Do you live in an apartment? Do you live in a condo? Do you live in a townhouse? Do you live in a single family residence? It's all gonna depend. So if you rent a home or an apartment, just make sure that you're allowed to tend to kids, which I'm pretty sure apartment complexes don't have any rules on that, but condos, townhomes, and single family residence, you have to make sure that you're in a neighborhood that doesn't have a strict HOA. So if you have an HOA and if you live in one of those cookie cutter neighborhoods with a, with a where every house looks the same, they probably have an HOA and you have to make sure that you're allowed to watch children in your home with cars coming and going because some HOAs don't allow for businesses being conducted inside the home. I mean, if you work from home but you don't have any cars coming and going, of course they're not gonna know. But it's going to be obvious if you have 
parents dropping off their kids and then coming back to pick them up. You definitely want to check into that. I've been there, done that, and it was a nightmare. We ended up moving to the house that I'm in now. It was a blessing in disguise, but during that time, oh, was it stressful. So make sure that you clear that up first. Okay, let's pretend that everything's cool, your house, your apartment, you can totally watch kids there. What is the next step? All right, the next step is you're going to want to Google in your state um, how many kids you can be licensed for or not licensed. Because if you say like, let's pretend that you only want to watch four kids. That includes your children in there. So say like you have a two-year-old toddler, you can watch three kids in your toddler. That makes four. And you don't have to be licensed in the state of Utah. You can watch four kids and you don't have to be state licensed. And you can run a little business. It's great. It'd be awesome. And then I can actually do, um, my series of videos will teach you what I'm gonna teach licensed people. So, if you like what you hear, then you're going to want to hear more. So anyways, four kids in Utah, you don't have to be licensed. If you want to do a preschool that's four hours or less, you don't have to be licensed. Anything over four hours, you have to be licensed in the state of Utah. States vary, but it's really simple to Google it and find out the rules there. All right, so now that you've decided that you want to open up a daycare, now you're going to look at your home. Where in your house do you want to put your daycare in? Now, I've got the whole lower level of my house. I'm an empty nester, and I've got um, a decent amount of space, so my daycare is downstairs. People, everyone comes in through the front door, they go downstairs, and they drop off their kid. And then they come back down to go pick them up and leave. I used to have my daycare upstairs, so I've got a kitchen with a dining room, little family room. It's not a big space at all. I have a small home. Um, it's a, around less than 1,200 square feet upstairs, and all the rooms are choppy, so it's not this big open space. So the kitchen is like, there's a kitchen here, and then there's like two little chairs here, and then there's like the dining, the dinette area. And that's where my daycare was. Now, you got to look at your house and with new eyes. Um, do you have a spare bedroom that you can use? Do you have a playroom that you can use? Do you have a basement that you can use? Or set up a space within a space. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to Pinterest. I'm going to do my screen sharing right now. So we're going to go to Pinterest. Let's do it again. In-home daycare rooms for small spaces. Now look, look how cute this is right here. Let's look. This is a little tiny space right here. And that's like the daycare area. That's so cute. Let's go back. Um, you can just kind of scroll as you can see. I have a sensory wall. I love it. I've got a caterpillar in an airplane. There you go. It's very cute. But this is more of a childcare classroom. Let's look for, but as you can see, you can buy little cubbies and then you can stack things. Pinterest is a great tool. So don't fret, don't freak out. You can just rearrange some things and you can have your daycare. Second thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to Google in your area. So I already pulled up the website in Utah. So you're gonna to wanna to Google child care licensing your state. And then it's gonna pull up, you know, your search results. And so I'm here at childcarelicensing.utah.gov. And here you go. We're gonna to go to licenses, certificates, approvals, and exemptions. And we're gonna to go to new licenses and certificates. I just wanna show you something because I'm not gonna go through this process today. So to be, it actually tells you things, all right? It teaches you new licenses and certificates. It actually says, 
Um, you're required to have a license or certificate from child care licensing if you are or will be providing care or administering a program that meet the definition of child care. And here it is. Um, Center-based would be a commercial space if you want to rent a space out in town somewhere. So that's center-based. And then there's a home-based comparison chart. Um, home-based providers are in the provider's home. Licensed family providers must care for at least one child not related to them. The children have a regular schedule of care. And then residential certified providers, there is a difference. I'll do another video between licensed family providers and residential certificate. They're a little bit different, but they're a lot alike. But I chose licensed family because I liked their rules better. Does that make sense? Um, residential certified providers must also care for at least one child not related to them. The children also have regular schedules of care. Now, here's licensed center. You don't want to go there. Here's licensed hourly. That's what I used to be. And let's go licensed out of school. You can be an out of school program, but mm, no. <laughs> licensed commercial preschool. That's outside the home. And here we go. Licensed family. Now, it's got the rule book here. So you can pull that up, download it, print it out, whatever you want it to do. Um, and you will always have to do new provider training, but the beauty of this website is if you click there, it takes you to YouTube. And there's all these YouTube videos that basically train you, which is great. Now, submit all of the following things. Let me go to my notes. Now, before you actually get a license or to come to your home to do a licensing inspection of your home, you have to submit the following items. Now, I have a cheat sheet that I made up and I'll put the link in the description below. It's a Google Sheet, a Google Doc, and I'll have a screenshot of it. You'll see it in the video. Submit all of the following. This is very important because they won't even come to your house until these things are submitted first. A copy of your current business license. Now, I don't know if every state requires a business license, but here in the state of Utah, you have to apply for a business license. Now, how do you do that? You simply go to Google, apply for a business license in Summit County, Utah. Let's see, summitcounty.org, because I live in Summit County. Business Licensing Summit County, Utah, official website. Go here, and it's gonna teach you Business licensing, let's see. We'll go here. In-home business, it's 75 bucks. And let's see. In-home and commercial licenses, you link, use link below to apply. And there you go, you just apply. And it says you're now leaving the website. You're gonna go to a new website. And here you go. And then you just simply apply for your business license. 75 bucks, and depending on how many kids you want and what kind of business you want is gonna depend on how much it is and what kinds of loopholes you need to go through. We'll talk about this some other time. Okay, back to child care licensing. A copy of your fire inspection. Now, what did I do? Let's go to fire department inspection. Summit County, Utah. Annual fire safety inspection. See how it pulls up? All you gotta do is search for it on Google. It'll pull up and normally you just send an application through to the fire department. They'll, call, they'll contact you through email. You'll schedule an appointment. They'll come to your house. And basically what they wanna see is that either you have your outlets all covered up or if you have the special outlets that you can't plug anything in unless it's double pronged, so it's child safety proof, they have those. Or you have plug protectors, you have a fire extinguisher, and you have another way out. There's not only one way out of your daycare room. You have to have two ways out, like front door and a back door. Like me, I've got the upstairs and then I have a bunch of windows that are 
ground level so I can just chuck them out the window. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but you know what I mean. They can go out the window safely. Um, so that's what a fire inspection would do. Now the third thing is a copy of your current kitchen inspection. So we're gonna go here. Let's go to, and it's the department. Department, I can't type, of health, Summit County, Utah. Kitchen inspection. Okay, let's go here. Food establishment inspections. Summit County, and I just contact them through email, you know, whoever you want to, or give them a call and be like, hey, I want to schedule, I'm opening up a daycare and I need a kitchen inspection. And basically with the kitchen kitchen inspection, they just want to make sure that um, you have a meat thermometer. <laughs> They'll ask you questions about how you store your food and their lunches and things like that. And it's not hard. It's not a big deal at all. They'll actually give you a checklist of what you need to do. So it's really not hard. So now you'll schedule all those things. And then you get everything back, emailed certificates to you, business license was emailed, um, fire clearance was emailed, and the Department of Health. Everything's through email now, PDF, print it out, you're good to go. Then you apply for your child care license. So it says apply here. Um, so now it says apply. Now here's my little hand here. No sooner than four working days after submitting your application, you have to create a Utah ID login, log into your child care licensing portal, and then you're going to submit background checks. Now this is very important. Anyone who lives in your house that's 12 years old or over in Utah has to get a background check. Isn't that fabulous? And I'm being serious. I'm not being facetious because I think it's wonderful because you don't want some weirdo in your house or as a daycare, as a person who's looking for good childcare, I want to know that everyone in that house has been screened with an FBI background check. So it's actual FBI background check and you'll submit um, fingerprints and you'll submit the W-9 form in the portal. Now all of this stuff is all linked. You can figure it out and you can absolutely get obtaining a license checklist. So this website is great. If you have any questions, please contact. They have a phone number. If you communicate with licensing, they go above and beyond here in the state of Utah, at least from my experience, to help you. They are here to help. So if you have any questions, stalk them. They'll write you back, email. They'll email you right back. They're really good with that. So that is all I have for part one of this series if you want to start an in-home daycare. So this is the licensing process. And in the next episode, we'll go through applying for our child care license and I will go over the new provider training and we'll talk about setting up your daycare on a budget and what are the main staples that you'll need to set up your daycare if you don't have any kids. If you have toddler if you have toddlers running around or kids in the house, you're kind of ahead of the game because you already have toys. Um, unless your kids don't want to share. That'd be different. But that wraps up this tutorial. I hope I did well with the screen sharing. We'll find out. Um, like and subscribe to my channel if you are interested in hearing more content. I have a variety of things. I have um, my Heaven's Little Angels tip of the week. I have Miss Nat's tip of the week. I have a vlog on here that kind of shows a day in the life of me. Um, it's on different playlists. So I've got lots of bingeable content on this channel that you can watch. Anyway, that wraps it up. See you guys next time.